And in some places, people say that once you say a person's name, you've already begun the story. And since we've begun the story, what I like to do is open the door so that all the stories I have to tell will just flow right in. Will you help me open it? <laughs> now, help me open it. I got something really, 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 really easy for you to do. You know what that is? Anybody who's seen me before know what that is? All you got to do is repeat after me. Uh, you remember that part? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Stories come and stories go. Stories come and stories go. Listen to the words and help them grow. Listen to the words and help them grow. That is not if stories are true. That is not if stories are true. Only what they mean to you. Only what they mean to you. Because stories come and stories flow. Stories come and stories flow. And away we go! Listen to the words and away we go! Shall we go on a little trip? Yes. Are uh, your seatbelts all fastened? Yeah. Walk around now. I don't want you to fall off of the story. Okay. Now, I just want to ask, what kind of field trip we got today? The stories, Georgia history, Atlanta history? Stories? What specific people talking about? I'm not an English teacher. She's next door. She's next door. Okay. Oh, there we go. Think so, stories. I know you came for stories, but I just want to kind of put it in some in context. But okay. we're just going to jump, jump right into it. And I'm going to tell you young people's stories. And I like to say, is the great, great, great grandfather of a story that we in the South know pretty well. Now, how many of you guys know that this house, a guy named Joe Chandler Harris lived in this house? Ooh, everybody, okay? Now, here's my, here's my real question. Which was the first of the stories that Joe Chandler Harris published? The Remus. Huh? The Remus. Uncle Remus. He published them all in the kind of Uncle Remus, but the book was called Songs and Sayings in Uncle Remus. But the book came later. He published the story. He was working with the newspaper, like up here. This is the newspaper guys. You see how neat and clean they keep their desks and everything? <laughs> But uh, these are all newspaper people at the Atlanta Constitution. And this is Joe Chella Harris right here. And one day he didn't have anything to put in his column. And instead of his normal editorial opinion, he put a story in there. And when people read that story, they said, oh, we want more, we want more, we want more. And he put more and more and more. Nine books later, 100 plus years later, people still like the story. But what was the first one? Kind of, sort of. You know, Brer Rabbit is about half of them, if not more. About like two thirds of them got Brer Rabbit. If you want to say Brer Rabbit and. About 20? Not more. Oh, wow. Nobody came later. Brer Rabbit and Brer Fox. A little bit later. Um, Brer Rabbit and Brer Bear. Kind of, sort of, now. <laughs> kind of, sort of. Because those characters are in the story. All right, Brer Rabbit, Brer Fox, Brer Bear. And there's another creature in that story that, makes, that sets us apart from all the rest. Let me get a couple from this side. This is the Tar Baby. That was the very first one that he published that kind of launched this 100 plus years for me, okay? So we're going to start though. We're not with that story. I'm going to tell you that one back three stories later. But I want to start with one that I say is the great, 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 great grandfather of that story, okay? The story says, one morning, a man got up. <laughs> and he went out to see how his corn was doing. Now, can I ask you boys and girls a trick question? Now, here's a quick trick question. Does corn grow on a tree like an apple? No. Or vines like grapes? Are uh, under the ground like sweet potatoes. None of them. None of them. None of the above, right? That's because everybody knows that corn grows in the grocery store, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. He gets out there to his corn, and he sees the stalks all broken down and destroyed. He looks in the midst of the broken stalks, and he sees a turtle. He picks up that turtle. He brings it back to the village. And when he gets back, he calls everybody out. Hey! 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 
He calls everybody out. Everybody gets around. He said, this turtle has destroyed our corn. How shall we punish him? Somebody said, cut him up, put him in a pot, make a stew out of him. The turtle said, yes, I'll make a tasty stew, but please don't throw me in the river. I said, wait a minute. They're not afraid they put no pot made in the stew. Is it something else we could do? Somebody over there said, get a rope and tie him to a tree. The turtle said, yes, yes, yes. I'm tied to some tree. I can't get away, but please, 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 don't throw me in the river. I said, wait a minute. He's not afraid of being tied to no tree. Is it something else we could do? Somebody way back in the back said, if it was me, I'd just dig a hole and put it in the ground. <laughs> the turtle said, yes, yes, yes. Bury me so deep I can't get away. But please, 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 don't throw me in the river. I said, wait a minute. This turtle's not afraid of anything. Throw that thing in the river. <laughs> throw him in the river. No, 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 no. Please, don't throw me in the river. That'll be the end of me. Uh -huh. I think we got something. Let's take him to the river where they got that turtle. They took him to the river bank. And when they got there, somebody got him in the front. Somebody got him in the back. And they gave him a great big old spin. And then they just swung him. <laughs> Splash! Where the water splashed and splattered and swirled and twirled. And after a while, the turtle came up to the top. And when he did, he had a great big smile on his face. And you want to know what he said to the people who threw him in the room? He said, thank you. <laughs> Didn't you know I was born and bred in the river bed? And that old turtle swam away and was never seen in that village again. <laughs>